Hello there. Uh, my name is Damian Borba, and this is Pactocast, our episode number one. And I'm here with Michi Brusco. Man, huge fan of your work, your experiments, and super excited to, to have you here. How's it going? I think you muted. Well, thank you for uh, thank you for having me. That intro was pretty sweet. You guys did a good job with that. Thank you. Trying to do like uh, the level of people that we're gonna have here, like yourself, deserves that. <laughs> so that that's a good compliment. Thank you, man. Uh, yeah. So the goal here, as I as I mentioned before, was to start capturing data and 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 learning from from great minds. I'm I'm a I'm a huge fan of the work that you do. Like as a skateboarder, as a scientist, I really see you as a scientist. I really trying different things, uh, like seeking new information, reading, and 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 really trying and 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 seeing what happens with your actions, and then take taking results and and just iterating on that. So that's pretty exciting, and um, yeah, really happy to have you here. Uh, if we do a good job here, I think one of the biggest goals that I have with this thing is, as I told you when we met. Uh, I have two kids. I have a seven-year-old daughter, Maya, and a almost three-year-old son right now, Noah. And I want to give them tools to face life and, and go through life, right? So I want to learn as much as I can from people like yourself. And uh, by the end of this, just give that gift to them. Say, hey, hey, Noah, Maya, please use this if you want. Uh, a lot of successful people are, are are using these tools, and they are doing good job, uh, a good job. So, yeah, that's that's the whole goal with this with this podcast. That's really what you know. That's the same thing I got going on. It's it's hard to nail down that goal. It's hard to put that into five words and make it make sense because there's so many ways to like. There's so many different like pockets of information that you wish you could just give someone all at once. But I mean, I think. We both have that same goal. Like, you know, there's there's a few things that if you can give, if you can give that to people, like if you can inspire action in people, if you can empower people to make decisions, if you can give them the confidence to be creative, like to be curious and, and intuitive and lean into their strengths, like you, you never get too much of that. Yeah, yeah. And it, it sometimes you need someone telling you that, like reaffirming that, what you're doing is valid, no matter how big or small you are. Right? Like, and I think there's always someone better than you, and um, you having that like hung, hunger to really try to get better. If, if yeah. even if it's just a small step today, you know, when you look at like five years, you know, things are very, very different. Um, yeah. So I have again a small structure for this. I don't know where we're gonna go to, but hopefully this is. Uh, interesting to a lot of people. At the end, we're gonna uh, answer questions from from the audience. If people have questions live here, and I want to start with um, a little bit of yourself. Like, can you share a little about like who you are and what your your main sport and some of other activities that you, that you do? And uh, we'll make sure we we'll add the links to to the post here so people could follow uh, your work as well. Well, the sports side of things, um, I mean, I've always been an athlete. I started skating when I was three. I played team sports up until middle school. So that's seventh grade here in the States. Um, and those those actually, were, that was a really big part of me. You know, I would be, it's funny, I would be a, I would be a basketball player, football player, golfer, you know, without, without skateboarding, I think. I love, I love those sports. I looked forward to game day with all my friends, you know, growing up, but skateboarding being what it is, um, well, it always just drew me the, the individual sports, like it always just drew me. Cause I'm so curious. Like I need the space. I need the, like, we talk about freedom a lot, like freedom of expression, but I think skateboarding compared to everything I've ever done has given me enough enough room to develop how feels like how I'm supposed to, you know, and I was traveling. I was started traveling pretty young for skating. So once I got too busy from that, I had I pulled out I pulled out of team sports and just focused on that and moved down to California at 13, um, competed professionally, 
since ever since you know i qualified for my first pro comps that year and we just full sent it um when i turned 18 i started skydiving again kind of one of those one of those avenues that's like there's really no it's like it's like skateboarding like there's nothing like it like you can't you can't move like that anywhere else and to me that's really where that's where my curiosity a lot of my curiosity is like just what happens if you're upside down going this fast and you put your hand up and you know like I just, just this yeah. kind of the i just like to know these things yeah i don't know why but you know i i've just always liked to know these things um and Checking, so uh, and and like unknown territory right like in yeah and running some experiments there exactly and so that's the and then i got you know i did like a thousand skydives i competed in tunnel comps and the side with you know with competing in skateboarding and and mega ramp um but in the last couple of years i think the the media side of things you know podcasting doing youtube videos learning how to communicate learning how to speak that's a lot of been my that's where a lot of my curiosity has been because you know it's one of the most it's one of the most useful skills that you can have and like once i realized that like once i realized that if you can speak you can be unstoppable it was like some clicked you know and that's yeah. kind of where i've been the last you know maybe before we met you know i've been working on this kind of stuff it's just it's hard it's hard to to do no that's awesome that's uh, that's amazing yeah, we're gonna go through like details as we go but i wanted to invite this little dude here to you kind of answer that but uh i'll let him ask that again and maybe cool. you can you cool. can answer let me know if you can hear it hey, yep yeah he's asking when you started and he said three four in this three years this old guy here, this guy yep. yeah of course i i remember i remember that name forever yeah um yeah, yeah i started at three my my mom bought me a skateboard um and they pushed me they they i, I don't want to say they pushed me like there's some crazy freaks that wanted me to be professional skateboarders from from day one but they saw my curiosity and they said hey that you know yeah you're allowed to follow that however you'd like you know and so ever since three, it was, That's we're, all, we're all in. If I'm all in, we're all in kind of thing. Yeah, this is an interesting thing. Like um, I have two kids. You you, you don't have kids yet, right? Um, no, and, sir. And um, one of the things is that I know surfing. I used to race, so I know racing. I know technology and all this. I built my career on, on, on technology. And we this is like, these are all territories that you know well and you want like, you know, paths like to take people in, 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 in a better trajectory. And, and I feel like um, I have a challenge. I want, for example, to excite my daughter about surfing. But I okay. also hear parents saying, yeah, don't push it too hard. Um, what was what was the uh, with you? Like, what was the trigger? Do you do you have that in your mind? Like, do you remember what was the trigger? Like, I want to be a skateboarder versus like basketball. Was some sort of like event, a reference? Do you have that in mind? it's never happened i don't want to be a skateboarder you know i want to be me i don't want to be a basketball player i don't want to be a podcaster you know i want to be i want to be me and i think instead of saying hey, i want you to be excited about this i think it's a special thing to be excited at all and i think if you can if you can help someone understand what it means to be excited that no matter what it is you're excited about if you're who you are and you pursue it with this level of enthusiasm, discipline and dedication and belief and proof and, and all these things that you can turn it and you can turn it into something, you know, because that's all it is. That's all it's ever been, you know, and it's like, that's why th that that's something that I think my mom really instilled in me, whether it was on purpose or accidentally and both of my parents, the way that they, they support me is, uh, and that's why I haven't stopped. That's why the skateboarding isn't the last thing I ever did because they weren't they weren't excited that I was excited about skateboarding. They were excited that I was excited at all. And they said, you you know, you can you can do it. Whatever you put your mind to, you can do it. That's choose amazing. wisely and choose it if you do. And it's like, OK, it's like in, in everything I've dipped my foot in. It's like if I just do it and I really believe in myself, like 
it turns into something and it always has, you know, and like, so with skateboarding, you know, that's always there. That's my thing. That's what I do. That's who I am. That's what made me, you know, but skydiving confused a lot of people and it never really made sense. And then I'm sponsored by iFly doing a 1260 and it clicks and it's like, well, if you wouldn't have let, let me be, you know, if I would have asked for permission to be excited about that, I would have gotten told left and right, you know, give me an Excel spreadsheet of why this makes sense in your life. I don't have the answers. I'm excited. Let me go. Like I'll figure it out, you know? You and so yeah. kind of having that space to just follow the follow my instincts so fully. You know, now I I have this place, you know, I have I have an office space to run a podcast and I I didn't have any listeners. I didn't have any guests lined up. I didn't have a a subject to talk about and just 10 minutes ago my podcast got shouted out on the 9 Club because I started talking oh, nice. about some things that are important and legit and real and it's like that's not me being excited about skateboarding that allowed all this to happen. That's 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 a different kind of that's a different kind of passion, you know, that it's bigger than one thing, you know? Yeah, no, it's like, uh, I, I see it uh, like in a much smaller scale. Let's see, but I, I, I come from Brazil, small town there as well. And here I am with my family in California, uh, working for a nice company. And I, I was always like, as you said, curious. And, um, but I, I also had these, like, I'll try this step. If it works, I can try another one. If it works, I can try another one. If it doesn't work, I can learn from it. Maybe I go a different route. And I think I was I, when I was asking about the trigger, it was more like, what was your like mindset when when you went through that journey of like I'm experimenting in skateboarding and I'm succeeding more than, for example, I don't know, swimming or surfing or anything. Uh, how do you use the, the the small successes that you have? to make your journey continue, like to, to continue that, that path of improvement? Well, success and progress and these things aren't linear. You know, if you look it, sometimes I'm, I'm just, I was in, like I was in, I, I moved here and I would have had to move home if I failed. Like it was very clear. It was very clear the, when it wouldn't work anymore. So, I fought to make it work, you know, every day, you know, I'd show up to the contest and try my best and good contests and bad contests. I knew what was on the line. So I kept, I went back home and I kept, kept working. I kept making it work. You know, it's, it wasn't like every day I judged myself compared to others. It was learn how to skate well when that clock's ticking and, and you're, you'll, you can stay in California. Like it's very simple. So it wasn't like, it wasn't like I'm the best at skating, so I'll continue to do that. It's like I love it, and this is the, this is the thing that I see that can take me where I want to go. So, like, if skateboarding, if I give myself, you know, if I'm all in, I'm hopeful that it'll it'll give me something back, you know. And just that amount of dedication, like no plan B, no second thought. I didn't even listen to the noise. Like, I was hated left and right. I mean, I was 13 and trying 900s. I was like the Nobody liked that. You know, I was like, I was a kid. I didn't fit in. I had braces and sponsors and my mom was like, I was basically piggy piggybacking on my mom. Like, I, you know, like I was a kid. I was a little kid. Like, but I was all in from day one and I'd never, and I never backed out and I've been all in ever since. And, and once you're in, in that place, you just don't hear the noise. Like you break bones and you figure it out and you, you lose sponsors you figure it out. You miss the cut for a comp and you figure it out. Like once you get, once I got through that hump where it's like, okay, I'm here, I'm in California. I'm a competitor. I skateboard. Like this is my baseline. This is what I do. It's quiet, man. Like there's no, it wasn't like comparing one step to the next. It was just like, I'm going to do everything I can to become the most all around best, most like established version of myself. In this in, in, in this industry. And I also knew I was small because like I got told it so often. So I, I knew I'm 24 now. I knew that I was preparing a lot for kind of th this time of my life, you know, like 25 to 40 is really where a lot of things, you know, it's that's different than 13 to 20. You know, that's different than that stage of your career. So you can mess up, you can do, you know, but you should develop and you shouldn't lose faith. 
So I it's know. like, <clears throat> hey, no, one one misstep or saying like, oh, if this is easy, I'll keep doing it. It's, And you never know what's around the corner. You just never know. There's no guarantee things will work the, the like as as expected right and that's that's the beauty of it um i like the fact that you mentioned that you n never kind of compared yourself with others like to grow and uh i had a very similar path and i also moved as i said moved to brazil here from brazil here uh mm -hmm. and i had everything to lose right if i did a bad job my visa was gonna get canceled and i had to go back and it was that simple and life was not fair or like it was not a rainbow right? <laughs> and like and learning that early on is super important like i see parents not saying no to kids not like making them tough right but uh that and, and that's a hard part like how how can we show them to be tough without hurting them like that's that's another thing because the only way you can kind of grow is by feeling it by going through the the, the pain as well right? so you you know what not to do to keep consistent on the on the mm -hmm. good path well they are gonna get hurt yeah yeah like Life there, is are, not fair. there are gonna get they are gonna get hurt i've never i i don't think uh i think instilling enough confidence to know that no matter how many times you get hurt that even if it was your fault that time, you're not a bad person. You know, like you failed. You're not a failure. You did a bad thing. You're not a bad person. Like there's no shame, like combating shame and instilling confidence, a sense of self. You know, these things are really important, you know, especially as parents, like especially as friends and, and these things like, yeah, I don't think you should, you should, make your kids life hard at home because their life is going to be hard in the world life. already, <laughs> but you should make sure that they go out in the world and get hit across the head by life over and over, you know, don't starve them of the opportunity of like, you know, saying, Hey, this is, this was your decision. And, and you're going to, if you make a decision, you go for it, you know, like <clears throat> you'll learn a lot if you chase things you care about. You know, finding what you're passionate about and taking steps towards that. And then life gets real yeah. quickly. Yeah. You, you're, you're a super, like, uh, from from my perspective, from the outside perspective, right? you're a super high-performant human being, right? You, you're a top athlete. How, how is the mind important to you? Like, what, how does the mind play into your world, your strategies, your, uh, your life? Well, everything, you know, everything comes from everything comes from the mind. The way that I work, everything comes from the from the mind. You know, I'm a I'm a firm believer that like you can't you can't hit a target that you can't see. You know, so if you can if you can see it in your head and really simplify your goals, what you're trying to do. I mean, most of the stuff that I've done, I would say outside of a 1260 has been a very clear goal set you know structure and visualization path you know it's been kickflip indies and 540s you know on vert and then like besides that it's been like you know do do these one-off things like the 1080s or the 1260 or 900s on vert or you get a crazy opportunity and you're skating well and you know you build this little mental picture in your head and you send it like besides those this this has just been a really long road of being incredibly consistent and passionate and and well versed in the mental game you know and through that developing my voice a little bit you know it's just it's come full circle in a way you don't see very often but really it's just kind of like the thing that like that the saying that like grass grows where you water it you know i've i've watered this I've taken care of my head and my mind over the years of, and I've, I've learned how to think about my goals without being completely overwhelmed and also not setting things too big that I feel like a failure all the time. You know, we're good enough to do the things that we want to do. You know, it's doing a doing doing contest runs like a lot of times it's really easy to get your get your head thinking you have to do a lot more than what you're capable of. And 
that's just not that's just not the case. Like you you can do exactly what you're capable of and do good enough to get back to the next one and practice in between and get a little better and do what you can do. And it's like that's kind of the road that I've been on. It's not, you know, it's it's not a uh, like I could walk you through it. You know what I mean? Like it's no, yeah, it I, I I can totally relate to that. And it's funny because um, as I said, when I was younger, I, I used to race uh, go karts, had sponsors and everything like in Brazil. And I remember the, the my motor, f- the motor ones, like the the, <laughs> yeah, the guys that the, you the know, I like all the F one drivers. Yes. I the, used to those, race that them. kind of karting. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yes, I used to race with, with a lot of Brazilian ones. Uh, and uh, I remember my first races when I was super young were terrible, like horrible. And they were horrible because I put a ton of extra pressure. Like that was the last opportunity to do that. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people that don't get the opportunity to do these a lot, like a lot of races, a lot of runs, a lot of contests they they go through that path of like this is the most important meeting on my life i have to do well and when you add all that extra pressure to your mind then you do horrible like it it it, it's doing harm to your performance right so how do you deal with that like what for me when i was racing the the shift started to i started to race a lot better when i was like okay i'll do I'll, i'll focus here i'll do my best i practice Whatever happens, happens. If it doesn't go well, there's another race next month. And that was my my strategy, right? But it took time for me to get there. Up until that moment, I was always anxious. I was always, like, scared, let's say. Um, well, there's a couple of things. I'll probably get distracted, but skater, like, for me, admitting that I really enjoy con- competitions. Like, I really enjoy competing. And that's not popular. That's not a popular opinion in skateboarding. Like it's popular to hate contests. It's popular to not enjoy, to hate on X Games and to, you know, call BS on all the the structure and the invites and, you know, you get shafted by the judges and you know it's it's much it's much more popular to, to not like that. But once I just understood that I do like that. I like the ins and outs. I like the growth that I've gotten from it. I, I like practicing with contests in mind. Like, so just being able to kind of live in an environment in my head where I am that, like I am a competitor. Like when I wake up in the morning, like I, I wake up a competitor, you know? So, I, so I'm there in my head. Like I know that like I get adrenaline in, in my veins. When I practice, I can see what it's like to be on that G ramp in Japan, or, you know, I can see what it's like to be on the mega ramp in Minnesota when it's about to be my turn. Like, like I live there in my head. So I think that's like a really big, it's a really big way that I mitigate the nerves because no matter if this contest goes well or not, like that's what I am doing it again. Like I'm showing up to the next one. Like if I, if I got dead last and I wasn't all of a sudden I wasn't invited to the next one. I'd find a way to get invited post on Instagram. I'd talk to people. I'd practice. I'd get my flaws back in order. You know, I would do those things like the pressure. I just see it different. I just see it on such a bigger scale than, than one event at a time that it's like, do your best. Like that's like literally do your best. Like you'll have other opportunities. You might be your last contest, but there's other opportunities that you can apply yourself. Like you learn stuff every single time. So I'd say that's the first, that's the first part. And then um, emotions have almost nothing to do with how you, like if you're scared or you're nervous or you don't feel so hot, whatever, like it's time to compete. Like I've, I've, I've felt great and skated bad. I felt bad. I've skated great. Like I've been scared and I've done the scariest stuff. I've been not nervous at all. And I've broken bones. Like it doesn't have it, you know, the way that you feel and all these things, like doesn't really matter. Like you just let it come and go. You show up, you try, you, you stay focused, you stay, you keep your belief, you know, you get nervous and your hand starts shaking, but like you keep your belief and you hit your spots and you know what your plan is and you take your breaths and you know, it just kind of simplifies the whole world. Like it's not, you know, don't let, don't let the 
event be like bigger than you you know yeah that's that's amazing um yeah so how do you deal with that like when that kind of thought comes you know like oh maybe if this bad thing happens or if this doesn't go well like what what tools do you use to block that and say like i i'm or like you're getting nervous as you mentioned and your hand your hand starts shaking you know you know the guy you know sean o'malley no ufc fighter sugar sean he's sick um i heard he was i only i just brought him up because i heard uh that um he was the only one who put it like this counter thought counter thought counter thought counter thought he's a ufc fighter so counters and he was like you know sticking and moving counter thought counter thought counter like that's all we're doing like they come and go like just like confidence comes and goes like who cares if it's there that day that morning like you sleep as good as you can you put good food in your body you you think about the right things as much as you can you know you see yourself rolling away from the trick you see yourself on the deck you know where you're standing on as far as the the field goes like you know what your goals are you make sure you keep your energy you plan to keep your energy strong late okay. so you don't get tired okay. out early in the day like you know make a good plan make the best plan you can come up with and stick and stick with it and let the shit come let it go like it's just it's the way it's the way it works you know like you're gonna have to deal with it. like just by competing you're gonna have to deal with practicing your thoughts because they'll eat you alive until they don't anymore that's amazing and you practice so much so it's probably better to feel relaxed right better to really focus on all the conscious pieces that you can focus and let the unconscious work without having to deal with like especially like with skateboarding with surfing I, f i feel like a lot of the things that happen are not conscious right like all the little things you do in your body it's probably your body based on experience making decisions at runtime yeah. and and mm -hmm. adjusting right so if you're too stressed you're gonna waste energy from those muscles yeah those minds yeah allowing your body to do what it knows how to do not getting in its way that's a lot of trust and you know and you have to practice that trust you have to practice trusting yourself at home on your on the ramp like you got to make sure that your your instincts are you properly wire your instincts to do the right things you know like so when it's time you you get to relax a little bit you know you get to you plan how to catch a rhythm in your in the middle of your run that you know some things like that that little tricks that you can use over but it takes a lot of experience you know yeah no this is um i i have a question for you here on that topic so here um you're up there right uh it's your fourth of out of five runs and i think you're out of like top five or something and what's i have what's, zero points zero points <laughs> what's yeah. uh uh oh What's happening in your mind now? Let me just share again and see what happens here. Uh, come on. Oh, man. Technology. But what, what, what's, what's happening in your mind when you're up there? For a lot of people, that's kind of because we are not practicing with you. We're not there every day at training. For us, from the outside, and I remember seeing the X Games when I was super young, like, oh, my God, these guys are crazy. But for you, was you've done this so many times, but and you had no points. Where uh, was your mind at at that point, and and what happened? Can you describe a little bit of that scenario? That one was a tough one. That one was a tough one. The last 1080 I did, I was 16, and in that one there, I was 22. So there's there's eight years, <clears throat> you know. There's there's eight years right there that that you know, fly by. I was on fourth run. I had a decent plan. I had a pretty good plan. This is one of the few times that I just, you know, agreed with myself that we were going to, that we were going to take a body or it was going to, like I ran out of, I ran my plan into the ground. You know, I like didn't have anything else to, to grab from. I didn't have another key thought. I didn't have another, 
you know, speed, you know, do this with your speed and this with your line and grab here. And then as long as you get your knee down, then you're good. Like I didn't have really that system for this one. Um, but I did have the one that said, you know, you've done it before. Like shut up and just <laughs> like stand on it. So I, that one was a very, that one was a very different circumstance than I'm usually in. You know, I was, I took off and my feet shifted. And I grabbed the board wrong. I re-grabbed the board and then I moved my feet around while I'm, you know, in the middle of, in the middle of the 1080. Um, and, and Bob even noticed, he didn't notice how, just how desperate I was, but he said it in the slow-mo replay. He just said, he just kept believing that's he's amazing. spinning and spinning and he just kept believing. And that's what that one was. 100%. You know, I get goosebumps talking about it because it's no joke coming around that coming around, you know, 360, 720, and then you're coming around 1080 and you're moving your feet around and re grabbing the board and it's everywhere. And uh, no, really one, only one more chance. And the trick over the gap is a hard one. So is there one more chance? It was like, this is, <laughs> this that's is it. it. That's it. It's the quarter that's giving him trouble right now. Bob. Very technical, very tough to land safety off the lane. He's going for a kick flip back with 80. Landing it every time, showing how consistent. Spinning really good. This might be it. Yes. Oh my gosh, Minty Brusco. Minty Brusco with a 1080. Great. Oh, oh that's what he did. He did a 1080. He cannot believe it. Yes, he's done it before, but to put it down in competition. That is so amazing, man. Like, again, for us mortals, seeing that kind of human performance is crazy. But, um, yeah, it's like one of those things, I think, kind of reminding yourself that you've done this before. You know what needs to be done. Just try, right? And then by that, that moment, I think things just clicked. And, um, yeah. Any other thoughts on this run that, that, that's important to highlight? Well, you get away, you, sometimes you get away with a lot when you really believe, you know, I was current, I was good, I was prepared, skated well in vert, you know, like the things were there where I was like, hey, you should stand on this one. Like, you know, you should give yourself a chance to get, to stay in the, stay in the pot, you know, like in, in, in poker, like you win the hand before, you know, it's like, give yourself a chance to, to catch a rhythm, you know, cause it's only going to be so bad given the circumstances like that's where i was you know i skated well in vert i was skating good on meg i was making every backside flip over the gap like these things that don't happen all the time that i was like let's and then that's my first gold right there and that's, that's like well that's a big deal you know give yourself like that was really important to me to give myself that chance you know because it it was a good idea that's amazing. No, that's amazing. And um, did you have any like tools up there in the ramp? Like when you were about to like, besides thinking, besides doing, like, did you breathe differently? Did you like, re like use some other technique to kind of help you in that process? Or I talk to myself a lot. So yeah, I talk, I talk to myself a lot. Why are you here? What do you want? Who are you? Like, what's going on? Like, are you okay? Like, you know, making sure that it's, it's for me, like seeing into my, seeing into my, you know, into my heart a little bit. If I have the confidence that I'm walking with or what's, you know, what's the deal here, you know, and I, like I talk to myself out loud. I definitely, you know, I definitely breathe. I have like a specific breathing, but there's adrenaline and I'm breathing deep and, you know, I'm like letting it out. I'm shaking my hands. Like I'm hitting the, I'm hitting the ramp and I'm like seeing what, like just seeing what's going on, making sure I'm aware of like who, who just who I am, what I'm, what, I, like what environment I'm in. And like, you know, I really feel like I belong there. I really feel like this is what, this is what I practice for. Like, you know, I've had events where you couldn't find on YouTube because I didn't do these things. And those days are not the days that you stand on 1080s. Like this is, these are big, this is a big deal. You really you get messed up. Like I talk to myself and I listen. Like if I'm not there, I'm not there. Fly over the gap. End of story. Like contest over. Catch them at the next one. Like, you know, this is like from 10 years of competing. If you can pull, 
you can find a couple, you know, you can find 10, 11, you know, 12, like really good times. But that's not every time I've competed. You know, I really talk to myself and like, I really find, you know, it's just it's too scary. Cool. It's too dangerous to play any games with yourself like that. Like, if I'm going to put myself in that kind of situation, like you better believe that I'm there. I'm there for a whole lot of good reasons. Yeah, there's there's a lot of people like, and, and I try to do that as much as possible. And it works for me sometimes, like being present, being in the moment. Like, how do you manage your pace, right? Because it's like, you cannot overdo it. You cannot do it too early. You have to really... And especially like in Mega Ramp, I just think it's kind of everything happens in a much slower like speed, and you have to remind your mind like, hey, this is this part. Now let's go to the next one. This is this part. How do, how do you deal with that? Like keeping yourself with the right pace. Well, either you're in or you're not. Like you'll know. Like you'll know if you're in. If you can feel it, if you have the rhythm, if you're there mentally, emotionally, like it's not, it's not something, it's like, it's not a surprise, you know, like, you know, when you're out, you know, it's, you get in trouble when you're out and you pretend like you're in, it's yeah. like, as long as you really know, as long as you can put the pieces together, sometimes they're confusing. Why am I crying? Is it like, do I not? Do I not want to do this or do I care so much that it's that important to me? Like, is there, is this ship turning, you know, are these, are these gears just turning and it, and it led my whole life to this moment or am I the master of my own life? And, you know, these questions are real and you have to have an answer and you have to be creative and you have to really know what's going on. And like those moments are when you find out what's going on like it's easy to make promises it's easy to show up training is easy signing up like accepting invites to contests like that's the easy part being on the ramp and finding who you really 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 are yeah that's that's hard like there's no there's no like easy, yeah. there's no way to know unless you do it you know and it's obvious you know the ones who know you can see it you can see it in their eyes, like you know. Yeah, like uh, it's a, it's it's a the way I I learn like with myself and seeing others and reading and all that. It's almost like you care, but you cannot care too much. Like you are, you want to do your best, right? And um, but don't overdo it. Just go with the flow. And I, I never for, forget like one race when I was probably like 22, 23 in Brazil. I kind of crossed the line of I was doing one like I was I was going over this guy and I I won that that race at the last turn and everything happened almost like without thinking it was almost like the 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 the, the car and myself we were the same thing and it was one time in my life that I felt that way you know like I'm 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 one thing I'm not me and equipment it's one thing and I never had that uh do, do you do you have that experience? Like sometimes things happen and you're not like consciously, like rationally thinking about it. Well, I try to pay attention to, you know, your rational, your conscious rational brain is very slow and stupid, you know? <laughs> so the, the less you can use it in a, in a competitive environment, the better, you know, like you can think yourself out of the zone real, real quickly. So it's like, um, but there's only been a few times that I'm on my A game, like Barcelona, 2013 vert contest best i've ever skated you know and that's i'm coming up on 10 years now and it's like wow. you know i've had i've had glimpses of that you know the backyard event at mantra's house like you know there's been another x games like the day before the 1260 and the 1260 were very good days like yeah they come they come and go you can't you know it's like a certain it's like a certain special way that life works it's like you notice how like when your relationships are going bad like they're all falling apart or like when they're going well like you you kind of don't have time for all of your friends and the you know family and whatever you have going on like it's kind of one of those waves one of those different waves of life that it's like 
you know, my skateboard and I know that we're going to, I'm going to stick it out. I'm going to be there. But like every once in a while, you just step on it and something, something special happens. Not even externally special, like something special in, you know, in here where you're just, and I'm sure this is true for, you are it. I'm sure this is true for a lot of people too, like in business, you know, like when they have that super special meeting or presentation and it's the same thing, things click, you connect to the audience. Uh, do, do you feel there's like a, a comedians pow- probably? A- oh my God. Yeah. Do you have like, uh, I'm, I'm a Christian uh, in, uh, do you feel there's a higher power somewhere like driving this thing or I, I, no, it's, it really depends on, on me and I have to do my best and, that's it. Well, I'd say it's neither. I was raised very religious. Like I was raised Christian. I really, I really like subscribed to it for a long time. Um, but I think it messed me up a lot too. Like I was scared to think my real thoughts because I felt I was going to be burning in hell, you know, like things that weren't, <laughs> things that weren't, aren't healthy. You know, that's yes. not the point. That's not what Punishment, we're doing here. Yeah. Um, but when you say things out loud, when you get a group that believes in something, like the way that health works, the way that your belief system works, like, yes, like there is a quantum world that you can shift with your mind. Like I've seen it happen. I've done it. You know, like it's not it's not so black and white of like, you know, like we are, are we matter in ways that we don't understand. You know, I really believe that the way we can connect to each other, the way we can connect to the, to the world and get things done. Like it's hard to do. Like, I'm not saying I'm just like, obviously just walking around, like, you know, controlling my, my career. But like when you have a deep belief in something and when you really, you know, when you really taking steps every day, mentally, emotionally, and physically towards like the things that you want to do, like doors open in ways that you, that you wouldn't expect. Like, so I got, I believe like there's, there's more going on than we really, than we can understand. But that's I awesome. mean, I don't, I'm not that's deep, you know, <laughs> I mean, that's just, yeah. I don't, how else do you say it? Like how, yeah. how else do you talk about that no, that's amazing. kind of stuff? I, I feel the same way. It's, uh, and some things uh, happen and then you're like, oh my God, this is kind of because of that, because of that, because of that. And also, especially in competition like things like little things matter like and and sometimes there's a crash and that guy gets involved and is it bad luck is it like or or someone competing at the olympics and it's a one-shot thing and then something happens like it's it's crazy it's crazy but uh, i think all we can do as high performers uh, again myself as a much smaller scale i would say on on the business side is do our best like every day if we do if if you think about doing something useful and and not falling into the distractions of social media and i feel so scared like with all the the, the distractions that my my kids are going to to see in the future right because i see i lived in the bay area and i remember parents struggling with their kids trying to kill themselves because of the pressure there yeah um, like everyone is to succeed I know, I know about that yeah yeah i saw your podcast your episode about that that was amazing um oh, yeah thank you no yeah it's like having someone else with you helping guiding and, and, and kind of telling you do your best i, I think purpose-wise we're here to be the best versions of ourselves like and if we get there it's it's mission accomplished right uh at different sports different careers and um yeah but it's well, easy to get distracted very easy well, to get distracted. well like it's not important what you do it's important what you believe you know like you're gonna have you know you're gonna f- fail in contests you're gonna have girls break up with you you're gonna have people not like you you're gonna let people down you're gonna let yourself down you're gonna be human every single day make mistakes constantly you're gonna do bad and things that are important to you you're gonna do great at things as well and it's just like a a balanced perspective on you know what your goals are and what you believe I mean I think that's why religion can be so comforting is like 
you remember that there's forgiveness at the end of every day and you start every day fresh and with gratitude and, you know, you get to put your burden on someone else. Like you shouldn't carry, you shouldn't, you shouldn't carry your, the whole burden of your whole existence on your shoulders with no help every day. And then let your actions determine whether you're worth anything, you know, like you, that's not the play. Like you, you gotta, you gotta learn how to let it, let it like, you gotta learn how to let life kind of flow through you in whatever way you can find out how to do that and show up again the next time with energy, just like you did days before, you know, that's, that's how we have to do it. I mean, that's why I was like bringing awareness to the suicide post. It's like, Hey, like every human has greatness and every, every human like has darkness and like, We really, really praise this greatness, but even among the circles of the, the, the greats, you know, cause we're all just people like even the circles among the greats, there's a lot of darkness within that. And like, if you're in that circle, you know, you know, who struggles with depression, you know, who struggles with, you know, self-worth issues, you know, who struggles with like life being too big of a burden. Like it doesn't matter what they're accomplishing that's happening. And that happens on a small scale too. And also people that you don't see, you don't see them do great things day in, day out. They are the way they hold their families upright, the way they, they carry themselves, the way they put good food in their bodies and they talk to their friends and they're there for people. Like it's, it's much more of a, of a balanced scale than I think people really understand. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's non-linear linear for sure. <laughs> And, yeah, uh, and there's no, yeah, I I, I get it. Uh, how how do you deal with uh, distractions? Like, because uh, for example, when we met, you were so approachable, right? You were, we met, we had a great conversation. You really helped us build the platform, and in, but at the same time, you're 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 very disciplined, and you're doing a lot of things. You're you're training, you're doing your podcast, you're exercising, and. Uh, how do you because you answered us quickly but how do you how do you deal with distractions how do you separate oh this might be important important this is a distraction what's your strategy there um so first i'd like to say that i've been trying to do all this stuff my entire life okay That's amazing. um and so like you don't know you nobody noticed the first three times i started a podcast nobody even saw my vlogs from years ago like nobody knew the times that I didn't train properly for contests because I did a terrible job you know like you just don't see it like I've I've been trying you know I'm just so I'm so passionate that it's like I've been I've been working like you know 16 hour days like you know and I have more stuff on the side like I'm 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 busy you know like there's plenty of distractions and they happen and they get me. And like, I still went to trivia night with a few friends last night <laughs> and I still showed up to boxing an hour early to talk and hang out. And, you know, it's not like, it's not like I'm perfect. It's just, I do a hell of a lot more than, than some people, but it really doesn't feel like a whole lot. Cause like if days were longer, I'd use it. Like if I had more energy, I'd use it. Like I have to go take a nap. I have to, sleep my eight hours. I have to take an hour and eat a lot of food in the morning or, you know, like I'm just that passionate where it's like, I wish that wasn't the case. Like I wish I could do this and skate and talk and do these things 24 hours a day. But like my body gives out, my head gives out. I get sick. Like you do get distracted, like catch yourself. Like my family's really good. Um, Like my therapist has been unreal helping me accountability coaching has been one of the biggest life-changing things ever in my whole life as far as taking action and learning how to set goals and how to to do step by step and how to not get overwhelmed you know set a long-term goal and then set very small steps to get there and do them you know do them but that's it's i'm not i'm i am distracted you know i spend time on my phone i you know, chase people. I try to get in touch with people and I go have drinks or go skate or, you know, but like at the end of the day, like I am passionate enough where like, 
I do spend the long days that, you know, do two podcasts and edit two vlogs and show up the next morning and talk about something that's important and, you know, go to the ramp in between. Like you make it work that if you want it, you know? Yeah. It's like being aware of where you are and what you're doing is really important. Right. And when you have those very clear goals defined in short term ones to, to, to guide you, I think, yeah, things become easier, a little bit easier, right. To, to, to maintain. Uh, I was, I was also curious, like, uh, about, fulfillment in happiness how do you see that like because people that get a lot of attention right and they go to like in your case stadiums people screaming and all that how do you separate like that moment from like true i don't know like long term what is happiness to you like how do you see it um well i i don't think the answer is like separating that from real you know, both are real. I think understanding how to transition between the two is important. You know, transition out of event, Mitchy, and back to like at home family life. Like, yeah, it is different when there are people screaming your name. You have all this pressure. You're signing autographs and taking pictures. Like, that's a lot of fun, though. Like, you should do that if you like it and you want to. And, you know, like, that's great. But like, my my practice of like how to get out of that and back into like a different mode, you know, uh, has been, you know, acupuncture and some yoga and, you know, grounding things that like take me back into I'm safe all of a sudden, like, you know, because of my body's at risk. So my physiological <laughs> response to those, you know, those events are really big because I'm in danger. I'm in physical danger. You know, my career is in, in danger. Socially, I'm in danger because I'm in such a public situation where everyone's listening to me. Like, it's transitioning back into, like, a, a, a place that's, like, safe again. It's hard work, you know. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't know what. I've struggled with depression my my since the early teens, you know. I'm driven. I'm disciplined. Am I happy? I don't know. I have meaning. I've I've been in I've been involved in some of the most meaningful conversations and most like purpose driven situation I've ever been in the last couple of days with that post about you know about opening the door for conversations about suicide and how it's affected people's lives and you know I've been farming emails and hearing audio files and and video messages from people who are just so thankful to that someone is using their voice and a hundred comments and it's a, you know, a shout out on the nine club and these things that, you know, like this is important. It's personal to me. Like I've dealt, I've been in, affected a lot by, you know, a suicide as well. And it's just like, I haven't even talked about that. All I said is, Hey, here's a place for you. We all are on, we're all in this together. You know, we all are trying to get to tomorrow. Like say something if it's on your head, like this is the place, this is maybe the best place you'll find today to do that so like here we are it's been that's been unreal like i know the meaning and and purpose and these things i know they're important to me i know what's helped me you know get out of bed in the morning and find some find some goals to chase and some things to do and making like you know, make, making a positive impact isn't always like fun you know it isn't always like be, you know, be, be thankful, Perfect. be happy. Like <laughs> that's not the way I work. Like I'm an intense kid. Like I've always have been like, I break bones going for what I want to do. And then I heal yeah. them up and I try again. Like I'm around savages I'm around people who are some of the most successful people ever to exist. And they'll rip your head off if you try to fight them. And it's like, all right, then let's fight. You know, like that's who I am. Like that's what you're and a fighter. To me, yeah, to sure, me that's, yeah. I, I, I made that connection where it's like, that's how I need to talk to my people. Like, this is real. Like, you know, this is a real problem. Like, sometimes you're trying to get to tomorrow. And, like, that's okay. Like, that doesn't mean you did anything wrong. Like, it's a lot more common than it's a lot more common than you think. Like, I don't – I'm not an athlete to, to be – I'm not an athlete to be happy, but – I am happy to be an athlete. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. And you can that's use kind of how it works. And you can like you, you are 
again, it's it's an amazing opportunity, but you are working on that platform to influence a lot of people positively. Right? Yeah, You're helping sure. people and, and you have this massive opportunity to to give that maybe even like here, you know, like we're doing something small first episode. Maybe someone somewhere will relate to this. We'll see like a little tool that can that can use that at that time. And yeah, that's that's as I mentioned to you when we started uh, Pacto was really to give something back, you know, like, and we're, we're here for, for others. That's, that's how I see it. And, um, and yeah. And thank you so much for being a great partner from the very beginning and yeah, let's see what happens in any, any less, less thoughts, maybe some, something on your like long-term plan. Do you want to share your big goal and, and maybe someone here can help. I can help. What's yeah. in your mind? Where do you see um, yourself? Well, I'm today? super thankful to be a part of Pacto. I think it's, I think it's perfect. I think it's perfect for me, and whoever you know. A lot of people who've gotten involved, who've who've worked with with me, are are. I mean, they've been helped. You know, like, un. You know, you can't argue it. They say, here is look at the progress that I've made, and look at how my life has improved on a skateboard. You know, um, but my my long term plans like. You know, this is evolving. I'm I'm very much one one step at a time. I know my long term. I know what I want long term, but I don't know how it's gonna exactly look. But this is, you know, we're doing a lot of good stuff. You know, I want I can't say yet. So I'm just gonna talk in circles if I keep talking, but it'll come. That's you fine, know, I have fine. I have plans. No, that's amazing. Michi, thank you so much for your time. Uh, all the the knowledge shared here with with us. Um, we'll record this and and hope to work with you a lot more in the future. And yeah, thank you. Awesome, you're, you're amazing. Happy to be a part of it. anything you guys need. Thank you. Thanks a million. Awesome. Okay. Bye, Michi. See you guys.